Tim McGraw is one of the most popular American country singer, songwriter, and an actor. Ever since he started his musical career, Tim has released 14 studio albums and out of them all 10 has been known to peak the top country albums chart. Born and brought up in Delhi, Louisiana, Tim grew up playing competitive sports such as basketball and baseball. He was so good at playing baseball that he was invited on a scholarship to attend the Northeast Louisiana University. But an unfortunate injury brought an end to his baseball career prematurely and he gave up on his dreams of becoming a professional baseball player. During his college years, Tim started playing guitar and performed at smaller venues to make some money. He dropped out of college while pursuing his majors and in 1993, he released his debut self-titled album, which was received very poorly by the critics and the music lovers. But Tim was just beginning and he worked harder for his second studio album, Not A Moment Too Soon. The album became a huge success and turned Tim into an overnight star. By now, Tim had released 14 music albums and with them, he had established himself as one of the best-known country musicians of all times. Tim McGraw was born in Delhi, Louisiana on May 1, 1967 as the only child of a popular baseball pitcher Frank Edwin McGraw Jr. and mother Elizabeth Ann. His father played in the minor leagues for several teams during his heydays while his mother worked as a waitress in a local restaurant. Tim was a love child of his parents as they were not married at the time when his mother got pregnant. Frank and Elizabeth were staying in the same building when the love affair took place and when she got pregnant with Tim, her parents sent her away to live with their relatives. For a very long time, Tim was unaware that he was not the biological son of his stepfather Horace Smith. At the age of 11, he discovered a certificate upon which he confronted his mother and hence, he became aware of his biological father's identity. Frank denied being the father of Tim for many years after he met him but somehow as Tim turned 18, they became close. They ended up forming a great relationship as a father-son duo and remained close until Frank's demise in 2004. Without being aware that his biological father was a professional baseball player, Tim was addicted to the game as a kid. He remained a part of his school team and played it all through his high school years. He started getting more into music at the age of 18 when he started attending Northeast Louisiana University, where he received admission on a baseball scholarship. Somehow, he injured himself which shattered his dreams of becoming a professional baseball player just like his father. He ended up getting into music more and more towards his late teenage years. He started attending Florida Community College in Jacksonville and came in touch with some music bands. He started playing guitar and got better at it. In 1989, his country music hero Keith Whitley passed away, Tim dropped out of the college on the same day and moved to Nashville to pursue a career in music. In the early 90s, Tim started his struggling period and made several demo tapes. He handed over one to his father, who had some contacts with Curb Records and a meeting was set. Tim played a demo for the executives for Curb Records and he was immediately offered a contract. In 1991, Tim released his debut single titled What Room Was the Holiday In, but the song was not well received. It failed to enter the country music charts. It was released as the leading single from his self-titled debut album but upon its release, the album failed to leave a mark on the critics as well as the listeners. Learning from his failures, Tim took a long time to record his second album and released it in 1994 with the title, Not A Moment Too Soon. The album was an instant success. The very first single from the album titled Indian Outlaw became one of the most talked about songs of the year, for both good and bad reasons. It received acclaim for its originality and essence but received flack for patronizing Red Indians. Nevertheless, it did not stop the album from becoming a major hit. The second single from the album, Don't Take the Girl ended up becoming Tim's first number one country single on many charts. The album sold more than 6 million copies and topped the Billboard 200 chart. 
The success manifested in awards such as Album of the Year Award at the Academy Country Music Awards and the Top New Male Vocalist in 1994. In 1995, Tim released his third album titled All I Want and the album repeated the success of its predecessor. It went on debuting at the top of several country music charts and at Billboard 200, it debuted on the sixth spot. The lead single from the album, I Like It, I Love It, further became number one on many country music charts that year. The album ended up selling two million copies. In 1996, Tim embarked on a nationwide tour for the promotion of his album and it was later dubbed as the most successful country tour of the year. The universal success of his album, Everywhere, finally established Tim as the king of country music in America. In 2000, Tim came up with his first greatest hit compilation and his single, Let's Make Love, brought him the first Grammy of his musical career. In 2001 he kickstarted the new millennium with his successful album, Set This Circus Down. The album had four singles out of many that attained top spots in the country music charts. Over the next few years, Tim's success kept attaining new milestones with the success of the album such as Like You Were Dying and Let It Go. In 2011, Tim played a major role in the film Country Strong and around the same time he announced the release of his next album, titled Emotional Traffic. The singles from the album titled Felt Good On My Lips and Better Than I Used To Be were released prior to the entire album and ended up becoming chart-topping successes. The album released in 2012 to success. Tim followed it up in 2013 with another album titled Two Lanes to Freedom, and in 2014, he released another album titled Sundown Heaven Town. Both the albums debuted on the top of US Country Chart. In 2015, he released a new single from his latest album, Damn Country Music, titled Top of the World. The second single from the album titled Humble and Kind ended up becoming another chart-topping success and collected many awards. In 2017, Tim entered into collaboration with his wife Faith Hill to bring out the album The Rest of Our Life. The album debuted on the second spot on the Billboard 200 chart and became a success.